Stem and leaf plots, done. Frequency distribution is the next thing. Now the great thing about all the things we're going to do with this section, this part one, everything just really uses the thing before to help you get the next thing. So when it comes to our frequency distribution, we're going to use pretty much the stem and leaf plot we just made, and we're going to do something with that. And it's not going to be bad. It's going to be really good. We can, we're, we're going to do this really good. So frequency distribution is what we got to figure out what it is. And this one is not a vocabulary word because I just don't want to be a vocabulary word. But this is one of those things I still want you to write it out so you know what it is. So this is my words of what a, stem, uh, what a frequency distribution is. A frequency distribution just sets up the numbers in a certain range and then counts how many numbers are in that range. That's it. So it sets up the numbers in a certain range and then it counts and then you count how many there are, how many numbers are in that range. So it might not make more make sense right now, but it's okay because we're going to deal with that in a few seconds. So here, let's go ahead and take a look at example two. Bam. In this one, we're going to create a frequency distribution from the data in example one. So we already wrote the information down for example one. And now we're going to just take that information that we have, like stem leaf plot and all that good stuff, and we're going to make a frequency distribution. Now here are the steps that we're going to do. So step one, we're going to determine the range. And it's best to go by tens, because that makes it a little bit easier for every everybody. Just go by tens. So, but you don't always have to do that. It's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to do something different, I'm not going to make you go by tens all the time. I, but the next thing after you do that is make a table. And so that's what we're going to do. So after, once we do all, we figure out the range, then we're going to make our wonderful table. Now here, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with kind of like what we did with our stem and leaf plot a little bit, a little bit. I'm going to make it that part. And we're going to make a table around this. We're gonna, in other words, make a box around all this. So we're going to need to have this part to consider our interval. And this part is consider our frequency. Okay, interval and frequency. So in other words, frequency, we know, we're talking about those that are, um, that deal with music. We know frequency is like the, um, the kind of like the, how, high it is and everything and pretty much the frequency here is talking about how many are in that in that in that range or the interval and so here and also let me do this part here too because we use the word range and then i said interval this means the same thing here range and interval are about the same thing so frequency is talking about how many times a number is in that range that's frequency let's write this down that's it. So let's go ahead and take a look at it now. And let's go ahead and take, figure out what our range is going to be. So we said we're going to deal with 10, go by 10s. That's always the best thing to go by. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to put these numbers in. Let me do this here. I'm going to make this from zero and then leave some space between it and put a 10. And I'll, I'll show you in a few seconds why, but just trust me. We're going to do from 10 to 20. From 20 to 30, because we're going by 10s, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, and I'm going to stop from 50 to 60. Because remember back those numbers that we had for um, the stem and leaf plot? Our numbers all went up all the way to like 56, I believe, was the highest number. So 56 wouldn't be in here between 40 and 50, would it? Nah. So we do 50 to 60 because 56 is going to be in there. 54 is going to be in there. That's between 50 and 60. All right, now, the next part is something that hopefully you remember back from the very beginning of this class when we did our interval notation. <laughs> interval, interval notation. Remember that stuff? So it's coming back. So here, we're going to write this in. Mm, sorry. 
And be careful that the first inequality is said less than or equal to. The second inequality is just a less than sign. Again, less than or equal to, that's just a less than, less than sign, not less than or equal to. Less than, just less than. Just less than. And again, hopefully you remember when we talked about this early on in the semester, we said that this was dealing with just um, numbers that are between. Whenever we wrote something out like this, it meant a, it meant a between. So x is between these two numbers. That's what that means. So x is, x is between these two numbers. x is between these two. x is between these two. Those are betweens. Okay. So let me go ahead now. Now that we have everything, all the numbers put in there, let's go ahead and do a box now. Now this will make will help out a whole lot if you do on an um, on paper with lined paper, because then everything will be lined up correctly and it looks it'll make more sense or look better. Um, but I didn't do that, so it's okay. But it's fine either way. Now the other thing I'm going to add in here is something that hopefully you still remember from the beginning when it came to um, um, interval notation, where our brackets and our parentheses and all that good stuff. Hopefully, hopefully you remember this. We're going to deal with this. Now remember that less than or equal to meant a bracket, and then this less than sign or greater than sign mean the parentheses. So that's what's happening here. That's all that's happening. That's all that's happening. And some of you guys are like, wait, Mr. Hall, like, wait, why, why is there not an equal to sign on both sides? Because we're going by tens. So if we're going by tens, we're going from like zero to all the way up to number nine right here, or even like 9.5 or anything of that sort. But if you start at zero, we say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If zero is a number, nine's a number, that's 10 numbers right there. That's a range of 10 numbers. So it could go up to 9.9 .9 or 9.9999, but between 0 and 9, that's 10 numbers. So that's why we don't use 10, because on the next line, we start with 10 and then go to 20. And then we go up to like 19.9999. Then we go from 20 to 20, 29.999. Now, in this case, if you want to put the equal to sign in there and then add that into it, it's you can. But just be careful with it. You can't have... You can't have 10 counted here and then 10 counted here. They can't be counted twice. 10 has to be counted just once. So with that, we'll see in a few seconds. But 10 has to be counted once or 20 has to be counted once. 30 has to be counted once. It can't be counted twice. So you can't have equal to on both sides. So just trust me on that. You can't have equal to on both sides. All right. Now, the next part is just taking what we did with our stimuli plot, and we need to go ahead and try to figure out how many numbers are between 0 and 10, how many numbers are between 10 and 20, and so on and so forth. So if we come back here to our stimuli plot, are there any numbers between 0 and 10 that are there? No, there's nothing there, because we didn't put a z if If there was something between 0 and 10, there'll be a 0 up here, and then numbers over here on this side. So we don't have that, so we just put the number 0. There are no numbers between 0 and 10. Right, going from 10 to 20, so numbers that are between 10 and 20 are these here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers are between 10 and 20. So that's 4, it goes here. Between 20 and 30, that's here. So 1, 2, 3. So 3 numbers are between 20 and 30. For numbers 30 and 40, so these numbers right here, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers are between 30 and 40. Forty to fifty, so between forty and fifty. So these numbers here are only two of them. And then from fifty to sixty, again, if you look back here, 
There's only two numbers that are between 50 and 60. And that's a frequency distribution. That's it. There's nothing else to be done. You have to make sure you have your intervals done correctly. And again, it's best to just do by 10. So you can do this every single time. Every time. And just make sure you, if it goes up past 60, then you just put those numbers on there. But do this every single time and then fill it in here. And that's it. So use your stimuli plot to help you do your frequency distribution. And you was done. And again, if you want to put these in here, instead of actually doing the inequalities, you can do that too. So if you want to do interval notation inside of here instead of inequalities, that's fine. It's up to you. I let you do what you want to do. All right. Now let's get out of here so I can actually finish it.